things aren't going so well, but I think it's a combination with the Chargers. They've got to get the offensive line going in order to improve those numbers from last year. They weren't very good running it, partner. No, they were bottom of the AFC, second to last in the entire NFL. Throwing Rivers. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Dontrell Inman, the intended target. And it's third down. This offensive unit, often they rely on the sure... handed Antonio Gates we know all about his basketball background but his football acumen one of the best tight ends in the league a little trouble thus far on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 11. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. Looking for Inman deep. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by the safety, Jarris Bird. And the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many ones in this play. First quarter, first drive, first interception thrown. And that last one, that hurts. They'll run for the first time with Mark Ingram. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. The play fake to Ingram. Now it's Breeze. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. He couldn't get the hook up there that time with Thomas. And it's third down. And we'll take a look quickly at the San Diego defense. Brandon Flowers is a veteran quarterback who often has his speed questioned, but never his playmaking ability. So a third and eight. They fake the give. Here's Breeze. It's complete to Flanner. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. So second down, three yards to go now. After the penalty, it's Ingram. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. When I watch plays like that, I give a lot of thanks that my DNA did not make me an offensive tackle because that is a very difficult job to hold your block against a really good defensive end and hang on to it so your runner can get to the edge. 
and do it without holding. I don't know that that's really possible for very many people. Bree's going to throw. This is caught. It's Cooks. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Now Breeze on the bootleg. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. Now Breeze on third down. Trying to get it to Thomas, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jaleel Ladai. And not much on the return there. He'll take it only up to the nine-yard line. And the San Diego Chargers get set to go again on offense. You talk about some of the guys that they've got out of receiver. Maybe not household names, Dontrell Inman, Tyrell Williams. But they've turned into reliable targets for Phillip Rivers, haven't they? And I think that's what you find when you have good quarterback play, that they can help those receivers get better. Of course, the receivers have to put in the work themselves. Let's, let's not fool ourselves. But those guys know how to scheme them open, throw to the right spot so they go get it. All of those things that increase their productivity. And Williams over 900 yards inman, 647 this season. Second down, Rivers. Now a hit, and Rivers lost the football. And this is picked up by the Saints. And they've got it very deep in enemy territory. It's inside the five at the three-yard line, first and goal. And New Orleans gets set to take over again on offense. So they're coming off two losses and two games where they really struggled on this side of the football. 13 points in week 13, 11 this past week. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. And the offense is able to pounce on it inside the five-yard line. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from it. Trying to get it to Thomas, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jaleel Ladai. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And now San Diego getting set to go. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about, what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And there's so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. Give them 13 on the pick up there. And the Chargers are going to have a first down. Some think that teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get... And he's going to go down. Back in his own five-yard line, it's a sack. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. They'll come out in the pistol. Here's Rivers, and he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. It's a tried-and-true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. New Orleans adding some depth to the secondary. They've got six DBs out there now for third. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. He was trying to hit Melvin Gordon there, and it's fourth down. Putting pressure on the guy throwing the football is always good, but when you can couple that with contact on him that leads to an incompletion, as we just saw there, that's winning football. There's 
just a 30-yard punt that time, no return. And the Saints will have a short field in front of them. They take over here, first and 10. Out is the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. And two interceptions thrown here in this first half. You hear it, no matter the sport, they say the great athletes, they can kind of have a short rush coming, and he's taken down. They bring the safety on the blitz, and he busts through to drop him for an eight-yard loss. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. It's Saints football to begin quarter number two, but they face a second and long to start things out. Second down, here's Breeze. It's brought in here by Willie Sneed. They get 16 out of that one, but they'll still need to convert on third. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. Off the corner, where'd he come from? Well, I, guess, I mean, I guess he came off the corner, but really nice play. I like when you... And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Their big-bodied receiver, 26 yards. And the Saints are able to cash in for six. And it's good as the Saints have a 7 to nothing lead. Uh-oh, flag comes out here. This is going to be roughing the kicker. When you're going back there on the kick block, and you've got to go to the right point. That didn't happen. Ran into the kicker. The penalty flag had to come out. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. This one taken from the seven. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. And now San Diego getting set to go. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback right in the face of him puts him down. Boy, first glance of that Melvin Gordon injury last week. You thought it could be a season ender. Fortunately, looks like it's not as bad as originally feared. It appears that it has shades of the injury A.J. Green had with the Cincinnati Bengals where he got hurt and people thought he was gone for the year. But now it appears he has a very good chance of making it back before the season is over. Melvin Gordon, I'm understanding, has that same opportunity. I hope so. Just three yards short of 1,000, that would be almost cruel. Here's Drew Kayser now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And from their own end zone, it's a fake. And this is going to blow up in their faces. Not only do they not get the first, they're going to lose big yardage as well. I guess I'll be charitable and say that that was not a very smart decision. You're and being it leads very charitable. To very yeah. generous, and it leads to two <laughs> points, Charles. Yeah, didn't we see Deshaun Jackson do something almost like this on a Monday night game against yeah. the Cowboys? Yeah. I mean, he was trying to make something happen. We totally get that. But you've got to know your situations. you got to know you can't do it there. Take care of the football. Ends up costing them two points. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff. Didn't yeah, they? when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in 